Hi Crafty Peoples and welcome back for another cardiology tutorial. In this video we are going to make this nifty little toolbox. Um, this is an idea that I saw on YouTube a lady over at its custom charming custom crafts. And she had a Facebook page but her page is not up anymore. But anyway when she did it she did a traditional red and a black toolbox sounds like a guy would have. And then I wondered what would happen if you took that same idea and just added some feminine touches to it. So this one is um, the one that I came up with for a more feminine appeal, but I had held on to a lot of the industrial accents that were used. And this, I, I got this using um, di a diamond embossing folder. And um, then I used just the regular Swiss dots for um, the handles and um, some bottle cap brass for the drawers and this particular one if I can adjust my camera a little bit here well, maybe I want to go the other direction I think um, okay maybe not but uh, this is a magnet this top one is a magnet and I just oh, there we go I just put that there so that it would, would um, close because for some reason when I scored my top it, it's supposed to just close naturally but it didn't. Um, I also did one for my husband that I used the black cardstock and same um, um, trendy diamonds, that's what it's called, trendy diamonds embossing folder and I used the Prima Craftsman paper collection because it has a lot of the mechanical um, designs in it. So I thought that it would be uh, good for his. And then the washi tape that sort of looks like that yellow tape that you usually see around the construction site. And again the um, bottle cap brass. And I did some extra scoring just to give it that look that um, the um, toolboxes have on the side. And these are these are functional. You can actually store things in here. And the drawers work. Just pull that out. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to pull it all the way out, but yeah, there's your, there's your drawer. And then the bottom drawer, and you can't see down in the bottom because there's actually a tray. And in this one, I use, you can hear, I use the heavy duty cardstock um, because I figured this one might get a lot of, of use. So, um, I mean, I use chipboard for my shelving. And then the little Tim Holtz screw brass on the top. Okay. So those are the two completed projects, and we're going to work on one um, today. You're going to need three or four pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock. It does not have to be black or red. Those are the traditional colors for toolboxes, but feel free to use any color that you want. If you want to, if you plan to decorate your toolbox, as I've done with mine, then you're going to need some type of designer paper. I'm going to try to use these. Um, this sort of red gridded paper on this one and I'm thinking that one of these two rolls of washi tape ought to make a nice uh, accent piece. You'll need embossing folders. I'm using um, Couture Creations Swiss Knots and Cart Us which is was purchased by Couture Creations. So uh, this is the trendy diamonds and that's the one that gives you that industrial look. But there are a lot of Tim Holtz and other people have industrial looking um, embossing folders that you can use to do this. Okay, and then of course you're going to need like a Xyron runner or APG or any oops, tape runner, any kind of tape runner. Um, I use score tape. I, I just like the, the aggressive hold that you get with the score tape, so you'll see me using a lot of score tape. Okay, so this is a long tutorial, so let's get started. The first piece that we're going to construct, and I've already constructed mine, is the, the actual cabinet that will hold your drawers. Um, to create this, and this is just a box, and I think everyone pretty much knows how to create a box. So let me give you the dimensions. You're going to take one of your 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock and cut it down to 9 inches by 11 inches. When you have it, um, once you've cut it down to 9 by 11, you're going to take <coughs> the 9 inch side, which would be your short side. So if you put it up against here, take the 9 inch side, you're going to score it at 3 inches, 
and at 6 inches. Then you're going to turn your paper the long way so that you have your 11 inch side up. And you're going to score that side at 3 inches and at 8 inches. And that will give you um, a grid. You'll have like 6 little boxes. And you're just going to cut your corners to form your box. And like I said, I've already done that because I want to um, I wanted to have some things, or at least have that done. But like I said, I think everybody knows how to make a box. And so get your box made. And all of your scraps, when you cut uh, your boxes and other pieces, hold on to them because you will be using them later on in the design. All right. So now we're going to make the little shelf that's going to fit inside your box to separate your drawers. To make this, take your second piece of 12 by 12 paper and cut it in half so that you have a piece that is 6 inches by 12 inches. Once you've got that cut, take your paper and place it the 6 inch side, which will be your short side, and you're going to score it at 3 inches, right down the middle. So make sure you get a good score on that. Then you're going to turn it the long way so that your 8 inch side is um, up against your, your rail of your scoreboard. You're going to score at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches. Turn your paper and score the other side. Same. Three quarters of an inch, one and a half inch. Okay? And then you have something that looks like this. And then I want you to one thing that's really important is to always make sure you reinforce your uh, score lines. And when you're working with black paper, it really helps to reinforce your score lines so that you can see where they are when you start cutting. Because sometimes on shiny black paper, and this paper has a, a nice shine to it, um, you won't be able to see your score lines. Then on the, the end that is closest to you, take your scissors and on this you're going to cut all the way up to the, the three inch mark. So you're going to take this and cut all the way up to the three inch mark. Like that. And then you're going to remove one section. So remove that outer section. Like that. Okay. Then go over to the other side, cut up all the way up to your three inch mark right there, and then remove this outer portion. Okay? Like that. Alright, so um, now you, you're going to, um, this part is going to be taped together. You're going to fold this over and tape it together. But when you're putting on your adhesive, don't don't put it on these wings out here. First, take your adhesive and take the inside. Um, and I would I would say use score tape here, but if you want to use your runners, um, use your runners by all means. But just remember, I mean, you're going to put tape on those wings, but you don't want to um, do it at this point. Okay. Over here. And one more. Right there. You probably don't need as much score tape as I'm putting down. And when I have to hit my credit card to buy more score tape, I'm going to regret having to put down as much as I have. But um, you, you do want it. You do want to have a secure hold on on here. So, do that, and then fold it down and rub it down. So then you're going to have, um, you're going to fold back this little wing like this, and fold back this little wing like this. So you're going to have a piece that looks like this. So feel funny looking little piece like that. Okay. All right. Um. And what this is, I'll just show you. This when it when it, when you fold all of, when you fold this back and put it inside, it will make your shelf. 
Okay? So now you can put down your um, adhesive on your wings. So, and here I would recommend using a runner simply because you, if you don't get this in your cabinet exactly right the first time, this is more forgiving than score tape. So you might have an opportunity to pull it up and um, reposition it. If you use the score tape, once you've got it down, you're not going to be able to move it and then you might end up with a, a crooked shelf. Okay, you want your shelf, and this is where you're going to need your ruler. Because you want your shelf to be, this is the corner top portion of your cabinet. You want your shelf to come down one inch. And what I've done on mine is I take my ruler and I find one inch and then I mark it. Uh, on the inside I make a little line and on the outside I make a little line so I know exactly where one inch is and you want to mark that on both sides um, of your project and this particular ruler that I have here is not working so well let me grab another ruler quickly ah, okay much better because this one is I can't see but on this ruler I can see where my one inch mark is so I line it up I find my one inch mark and then I take um, and if you have a, a you know a method that you use for marking that's fine you can put a paper clip there you can however you want to um, approach it you just want to make sure that it's even on all sides okay so um, I have to put this down so I can get get my mark and put this over here so it doesn't stick to anything and it's kind of difficult when you're doing this on black uh, so just bear with me one minute while I get this mark off and there's my mark for my one inch and then I go to the other side and I do the same thing <coughs> and it's by lining that corner up right there and there's my one inch mark and pretty much when you get one side down the other side is easy okay so I hope you can see this I'm trying to get very close up on the camera so you want to take the little shelf that you made fold your wings back find locate your one inch mark inside your cabinet and you want to slide that down and then you want to line it up with the mark that you made uh, Mm. This is always the hard part. And you want it to line up if you want your shelf. Well, you want your drawer to fit for one thing. Okay. So, there's my one inch. And I'm not going to press this down until I'm sure that my shelf is straight. You just have to kind of look at your shelf and eyeball it to make sure that it's straight. I'm going to have to try this around so I can see. Uh, I think that's, I think that's about straight. Yeah, I think that's straight. When you're sure, you feel confident that you've hit both your marks and that your shelf is straight, um, then you can go ahead and, um, secure that. So there's my shelf. Okay? And that looks relatively straight. Alright. So, um, what you also might want to do at this point is, you might want to, I'm going to get rid of this scoreboard for a minute. 
you might want to go ahead and um, make sure that all of your uh, on the inside that your your flaps are not sticking up that there's nothing uneven in there because that will your drawers will not work properly um, if that's not straight and if you didn't cut it looks like my I was like a micro fraction over on my um, length here and so I've got a little bit of a bow right here but there's nothing I can do about it okay all right so that's done so now we're going to move on and we're going to do the top tray that goes on top of here okay so when you were cutting <coughs> your paper you should have ended up with a um, a um, piece that's about four inches by six inches and you will have to trim just a little bit off of it but um, not too much so you'll have that four inch by six inch piece and this is um, to make your top tray that goes on top so you're going to take that and you're going to score it at one half inch on all sides so just put on your scoreboard go a half inch there and a half inch oops <laughs> and a half inch there. I should be using my scoreboard. And a half inch there. I don't know why I pulled out this Martha Stewart. I usually use my score pal. find it easier to use. Okay. And and then you're going to do the same thing. I mean, you're just going to go around, reinforce your score lines. Okay. And reinforce those because we're going to make another box so that's basically what we're going to do and then once you've got your score lines reinforced you're just going to cut and I like to cut you know on the same side that way I get a really square box but you can do yours however you like and for these little corners here if you have glue dots you can use glue dots to put on this particular one but like I said I am a score tape person so I use score tape instead I just like it and please put yours on the outside so that you don't have to bend your project back the other way I put mine on the wrong side but that's okay um, do this, do this, and do this, and do this, and do this, okay, and then um, peel this off, and for my box, I probably should have trimmed these edges for this little box, but we'll see, I may only have to trim one. I think that's the one where my score was kind of off. Like with your big box, you want to try to make sure that it's square. The <clears throat> line is off a little bit. I don't know why. But anyway, we'll make it work. Okay, here we go. Fold that one up there. Okay, he looks good. And. Oops. There you go. And fold this one up here. He looks good. Alright, so just true up those things. And you can, if you pinch the corners like this, just pinch them in, that will help to uh, square your, your tray. Okay? And then once you've got that done, you want to turn it over and um, you can put the tape on the top of your cabinet. I prefer to put it on a on on the box, the bottom of the box, but you can take it and just, you know, run it along. You can take your Xyron runner or your APG and just lay down some adhesive on the top. And sometimes I will use both the score tape and the um, adhesive runner just to make sure that everything um, sticks down. So I'm just going to add a little piece of 
a score tape here and I'm going to probably add a little piece of score tape to the bottom of my top tray right down the middle <coughs> tear okay and then you want to line this up because if you don't get this lined up properly if, if you don't get your um, If you don't get your top tray lined up properly, then your lid won't work on your um, on your box. And if you switch the drawers around, if you decide you want the, I'm going to turn my this so I can line up my back back here. Um, my recommendation would be you line it up back to front, make sure that your back is flush, and then set it down, and then you can press it. And make sure that you've got a good seal and then there you go you've got your your top card made and we can move on to the drawers which is going to be a second video because I think I'm running out of time on this one okay so when we come back we'll do the construction for our drawers thank you see you in version 2